Six Sense with Nikki Six. Six Sense, it's Jen, Nikki Six, Richard Patrick in studio with us. Hey. How are you? How are you? Boy, that couldn't sound any more awkward, could it? <laughs> have you been doing press all day? I have. Are we at the end of your press train? It's, yeah. I think today is the last, this is the last thing of the day. Of the day. Yeah, so I've talked my brains out and I don't remember what I said to you or to anyone else, but mm-hmm. I know that I said everything. Yeah. Do so you, there's this weird thing. Are you exhausted after press days? Not really. Really? Not anymore? Yeah, if I take a if I take a five minute nap, I'm good. I, you know what? I asked my producer before you came in. I said, do you think Richard might want to take a nap? Because I'm really, I'm tired. And she said, no, I bet you would take, you would take a nap. I'd take a nap right now. Uh-huh. I would lie down on that couch. That's right. Oh, look at my manager. There he is. Good Jamie night. Talbot. Night. Jamie Talbot resting on the couch. <laughs> now pretending he's awake. So you kind of mentioned a second ago after doing um, one of your delightful impressions that you're on Instagram. Are you very active on social media as a whole? Uh, yeah. You like it? No. Okay. I, I like I like Instagram because it's cool. I can put up pictures of like my life and you know things I think are interesting. Facebook is totally political. Yeah. I only do politics. On Facebook, really, and it's, uh, it's really annoying to the my fans that are Republicans, mm-hmm. and I apologize <laughs> for that. I like um, the pause, but I um, the Twitter is kind of just banned stuff. Then there's the filter Facebook, which is just banned stuff. Yeah, but like my personal, I actually had to take myself out of the public and just I just figured the the four thousand friends that I have are are only going to be subject to the the constant left-wing agenda socialist guy that I am, actually. Well, would you consider yourself very educated when it comes to politics? I consider myself more educated than the Donald Trump voter. Okay. Do you know anyone personally? I just asked everybody in this room before you came in that's voting for Donald Trump that has a stake in him. I do not know anyone I don't either nor would I allow myself <laughs> to be disposed to <gasps> hang out with such a person I, mean, I wouldn't really, be able to do it who no. are these people that are saying yes is, is my question I, I don't know anyone I, I guarantee it's an hour outside of every city this is basically what it is what a great way to put that it's an hour it's an outside it's an, an hour away from every major city absolutely so if you go and you drive into nowhere <laughs> when you get out to like fresno uh-huh or not even fresno but just like halfway between bakersfield and fresno like right in that area there's donald trump That's, those are the people that I, love him i can't i can't even fathom the whole thing in nevada scares me the, I, I just can't fathom that we're actually still moving forward i thought by now like ha 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 there's this dangerous crazy side to america which we are now seeing absolutely and it started with the tea party taking their country back i'm gonna take my country back i'm gonna get it and then it ends up with well he just says it like it is he says he wants to punch people in the face right he says he wants to bomb the out of people right he says he wants to he's he he wants to take care of the homeless but there's already a system in place called Medicaid, which takes care of the homeless. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what the hell is this guy talking about? He doesn't say anything, but whatever it is, it's going to be fantastic and it's going to be better. And you're a loser if you don't agree with me. That's it. I literally feel emotionally abused after I watch one of his yes, speeches. I feel I'm like, like cowering in the corner. I'm just I'm sorry. like, who? And, and by the way, if you're surrounded by people that let you leave the house <laughs> with the comb over <laughs> and the fake tan 
and the dye job. I love when he's in the wind. It is the greatest. When he's with the if you're if you if someone says, "Honey, I love you. Have a great day at work. You're perfect the way you are." Don't cut your hair. Just, you know, let it, comb it over. Yes, when you're balding, you comb. No one will know, Donald. No one will know, Donald. It'll be fine, Donald. When someone says that to you every day, you become clueless to the fact that you're combing over (laughs) your bald spot. That's the problem. Oh my god. It's not even like his view on anything. Everything should start with his hair. The issue begins with his hair. He's got a comb over. Oh my Next. God, what a guy. Like Bernie's like, hey, I'm gray, I'm balding, my hair's a little crazy. Did you see how he entered the race? All right, listen, I gotta do this. I gotta get back to the Senate. All right. He he like announced himself into the race. He was like I'm busy. I'm, I'm go, gonna I'm go. I've gotta go. Listen, I'm gonna run. This is the thing. This is my platform. I put it on a piece of paper. I'll see you later. Like <laughs> went back me to the Senate. Me. Like, yeah. I gotta go. Like there was no there was no nothing. There wasn't he didn't have an escalator, that's for sure. <laughs> oh my god. This is such a catastrophe, man. Like, what's going to happen if this really moves forward? Well, it's not because a majority of the voters that are going to show up are going to be moderates and they're going to want someone that's just going to keep, you know, keep the keep the lid on it and and take care of it. Otherwise, it would be a complete misrepresentation of of America. He would get us killed. He would. He's going to start World War Three. Absolutely. Him and Kim Jong Un are going to have a pissing contest. Well, I'll tell you, no one says he's going to attack America because on my my missiles are beautiful and they're fantastic and they're going to, you know, no one takes no one with a sane brain, moderate head takes Kim Jong Un seriously. The people that do suffer that fool are people like Trump, who go, "What do you mean <laughs> you're going to attack us?" What do you mean you got nukes? You want to see nukes? I got nukes. I got, I got nukes coming out of 5th Central Park Avenue. You know, like, he's, he's a nut. He's a nutter, and he shouldn't be allowed to... He shouldn't be allowed to... If he wins the primary, think of how... Can I swear? Well... Think of how messed up the Republicans are if this is the front runner. Oh, my God. Like, I'm sorry. Like, all sanity has left the building. He's a reality TV star. Yeah. Are we serious? He's a goofball. He's a goofball. Let's talk about music. I don't like Donald Trump. Or his head. And his he's, his comb over is bad. It's bad. In the wind. He shouldn't have the comb on her. <laughs> it all starts with the comb, comb over. Mm-hmm. Who's that? Sorry. Who's... I just do imitations sometimes. <clears throat> I like it. It works well. Did you do any imitations on your on your record? No. no. You should do one. You should do a cover and do it as the person. That'd right. be great. Like a uh do a James Brown cover. Oh, he's that's hard. I know. Yay, yeah, yeah. I I don't know <laughs> if I can do it. This is your seventh album. Seventh. Yes. Crazy Eyes? Crazy Eyes. Why Crazy Eyes? Because okay. take a look at him. <laughs> take a look at him out there. Adam Lanza, Dylan Klebo, Eric Harris. The VT guy. I can't stand those pictures when they post those. They, they're all like, Ugh. they've all got this bizarre look in their eyes. That's crazy. That's crazy eyes right there. Those crazy eyes. You know, it's Donald Trump. It's make America hate again. Did you run with that? Is that where it came from? Yeah. Yeah, I just, I, I just was like, there's something, there's a common link between all of these crazy killers and the look in their eye. And like, it's real. It's like it's a real thing. Like they're crazy. They are crazy. crazy. Absolutely. What did you did you sit down and think about these people when you were writing? Yeah, I mean, did you just think about America as a whole? There were a few songs. Like you know, when I write, I write in the moment. Mm -hmm. And you know, the first single, "Take Me to Heaven," I did all the music, and then I went to my father was sick, and I went back and I I watched him pass. he, He he passed away in front of me, and I. I remember seeing this gratitude in his eyes and I don't know if I'm, I'm an atheist. I don't believe that once the brain 
shuts down and there's no blood or no oxygen going on it just stops you just stop to exist and i i would like to think if there's a heaven that i i would i would like to see my dad there and everything but you know so it's kind of like you know i get into heady stuff when i when i write records i i figure love sick and love songs are done by adele and bieber and taylor swift so well that you don't need to I be a part do, of it i have to do the weird yeah stuff. the opposite and i don't want to do like the metal stuff you know like you know the church is on fire with the goblins and the ghouls. You know, I can't do that. So I just I just stick with subjects that are really close to the fringes of our society. The the weird crazy eyes, the mm -hmm. the strange Hey Man Nice Shot was mm -hmm. written about our Bud Dwyer held a press conference, blew his head off at a press conference, you know. That that was my that was my first song and it was the biggest hit like one of the biggest hits I've ever had. And it's like, the more I stick to that stuff, the better I feel. And I think that translates to the, the, the fans because they know I'm happy and I'm talking about something that's interesting yeah. to me, you know? Going back to um, your atheist side, mm -hmm. and you said you you wanted, you know, if there was a heaven, you wanted your dad to go there. Is there oh, any... Well, I well, take me with you, take me to heaven. Is there anybody else you would want to be there? In heaven? Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously my wife and my, fa my my family, but I don't I don't think anything happens. Right. Yeah. So, was... so it's impossible for me to. Right. Because if it's, if it's real, then it's all. Oh, let's bring oh, everybody. Well, let's have a party. Yeah. 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 It'll be like the end of uh, This Is the End. Remember that movie? Yes. <laughs> it'll be the end of that. It'll be like, hey, let's just dream up in sync, coming and playing a concert. Right. Or, you know. Yeah. I I mean, if it's all one big cloud and everyone's got a harp i'm all for it i just you know? think it would be so difficult to you know i've never had a loss like that personally mm -hmm. so i just think it would be difficult to not imagine that i mean you yeah. I, you know i i find that actually very beautiful that y you hope you hope he's there well i hope for you the hope, best. you know you're going there but I, I i would hope that it's there but i mean to me it's it's Ultimately, it's kind of made up. Yeah. And you know what? I agree with you. And so yeah. does the person that sits there. So it is interesting when you lose somebody. Just uh, yeah. hope for the best. Well, I just, you know, it's uh, it's sad. Life is, you know, life is right now. You right. know, planet Earth is right now. We know those things are real. Have you always been that kind of person that focused on the now? Uh, yeah. But, you know... Yeah, the, you know, way, way harder when I was drinking because mm -hmm. it was always what's next now? What's what am I doing right now? But now that I'm sober and I've kind of stepped back and I can have long view and, you know, stuff like that, you, you tend to take in bigger, you know, issues and think a little bit more. You know, it's we're going to be alive for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, I'm only 47. And I've already got all this gray hair. You know, what's going on? <laughs> Whenever you got sober, you go back on stage, you know, for the first time after everything happened. Were you nervous? Yeah. Was it a totally new experience? Totally. Really? Yeah, it was like, this, this, uh, this stuff is weird. This is weird. Do you feel like everybody around you noticed? Like the I, crowd and I have I've realized that I have to disappear into myself mm -hmm. and look for those people in the audience that are having a good time mm -hmm. and focus on them. And then there's quite a few. I mean, you know, well, yeah, you, you know what I mean? You play a concert <laughs> and you show up and you look into their eyes and you, yeah, let's go. And it's it's right back. They I mean, follow you wherever you go. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's amazing. That's really reassuring. Sometimes when you're playing like a festival mm -hmm. and, you know, they're there for a lot more. They're they're there for many other bands. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes that can be a little weird, you know, like you guys dig me. <laughs> <laughs> you guys like me. Do you like me. You know, but but uh, I always find the joy. And I mean, it's rock. Yeah. It's it, you're allowed to do whatever you want. You when know? it came to Crazy Eyes, yeah, you had uh, a hand in almost everything, right? Yeah, 
production. And that's different from the past. Well, yeah, I was in the last two records, I've relied on uh, the the guidance of a producer and Mm -hmm. kind of, you know, like some of the rough edges that I kind of liked were slimmed down and, and, you know, sanded down and made more less abrasive. And I, I think that the only thing I have to offer is the strange, you know, things that are in music. Anyone can play three chords and write lyrics and sing it a certain way. Anybody can write a song that's technically a well-written song, but it's the weird songs. The, mm-hmm. It's the strange, you know, in Mother E, for instance, there's one line, I repeat one phrase over, and it's not because I'm lazy. It's because I'm like trying to drive home a point then there's this big, huge chorus, and then it breaks down into a, a, a cello. Mm-hmm. And and you're kind of like, and it, it only happens once in the song. And then it goes back into the verse and then a chorus. And it, it, to me, that's more interesting than, than okay, intro, right. verse, bridge, chorus, outro, you know, like it, it's all, like that's boring, you know? And so I... I really enjoyed just being like, hey, I don't care. I t- t- nope, get it, get rid of it. Take, take it off. I, we're doing this. So from now on, you you probably will be in the forefront. Yeah, if 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 if, if you know if this record does well and everybody's <laughs> happy and people make money, you know how it is. Yeah, you know. I mean, but I I feel like this is the. I mean, I've always been very heavy handed. Yes. In the earlier years, it was very like belligerently heavy-handed like you know like threatening to kill people overbearing y- yeah maybe. just wasted and yeah but kill you <laughs> you know just like right. bizarre bizarre behavior but then you kind of when you get sober you become nice and you want to work well with others and then all of a sudden you're kind of lessening the the drama mm-hmm. and so this record was about keeping the drama in the studio and and pissing people off mm-hmm. and and saying no, I don't. I'm sorry. I'm. We're going to do it this way, and that's just the way it is. You know, like you know, working on drums and distorting the drums on purpose is mm-hmm. like what we're doing. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you have to kind of be forceful and you have to be tough and in charge. And I think that that was one of the reasons why, because it became like I was like, look, I don't give a crap what you're doing. This is I don't like it. You know, and you you have to be able to stand your ground and say that to get the weird mm-hmm. moments on the record because everyone wants to just go, whoa, that's too weird or that's too, you know. So for me, it was it was it was kind of becoming one with the belligerent, young, crazed kid that I was, and and accepting that. Not that I wasn't before, but it's more so on this record. That's why I wanted this record to be just weird. Is not necessarily heavy, but weird. It works. Yeah, thank you. You know, it's really cool. Did you surprise yourself? I was I was pretty happy when I started getting mixes, the mixes back, and then when we got the mastering back. And that was, again, that was another point where everyone was like, oh, it's too compressed, it's too crazy. I'm like, it sounds good on my, my, right. my earbuds. <laughs> do you know how I did hard, what I wanted to do. Do you, do you know how hard it is to make your earbuds sound good in your... <laughs> iPhone like like you can't play it loud enough it can't be cranked enough like we like distorted it going into like like you know what I mean like it was it was an honor just to be able to be with some like working with Howie just like he's the guy that mastered it and just like no crank it just crank it it's supposed to be aggressive crank it don't make it clear don't make it perfect just make it loud and noisy and crazy, you know? Did, would you say that you were angry when you were in the studio? Yeah. Where, where do you go mentally? How do you how do you get to that, that point? The I turn on the news. Okay. You really just carried that with you through the whole record. I, I but, but there's a lot. Well, Pride Flag is about marriage equality. Right. And how great that was. Mm-hmm. That the, you know, that the president and... You know, the Supreme Court came back and said, look, as far as a federal thing, you can get married if you want to be married. You know, if you want to be a man and man and be married, be married. And I think that that's where I 
like to me that's a great thing because what that's saying is no matter what your religion you can't push your religion into the laws of the land mm -hmm. and i believe in destroying religion i mean i'm an atheist so any bronze age thinking to me needs to be moved out of government and that's why i celebrated so i was like pride flag and you know and typed out you know typed out these great lyrics and stuff like that is there anybody else that stands out to you that that's really making a difference in the music world taylor swift <laughs> You're taylor right. swift attacked spotify she went against she went against apple what did she do with apple Taylor Swift has the power to to take on these huge companies when when other bands can't. Mm -hmm. You know, it used to be Metallica was the only band rich enough, right, to try and say, okay, look, other bands can't afford this, but we're going to take this on, and they were right. I mean, Metallica was right. Metallica was right. If you go to a restaurant and you take the cheeseburger off of the counter and walk out the door without paying for it, you're going to go out of business, right? If you're a business owner, mm -hmm. you're going to go out of business. If you take the music out of the machine and put it onto your machine and you don't pay for it and you listen to it whenever you want, musicians are going to go broke. That's exactly what happened. It's never been the same. They were right. So, you know, and they got picked on for that. Yeah. They got picked on, you know? that. Yes. And the reality is, is all of the people that I used to know in the music industry are all, they're gone. There were 2,500 people at Warner Brothers. When I got signed to Warner Brothers in 1994, there were 2,500 people in the L.A. office alone. Wow. And now it's like 30 people at the most. Right. You know, it's, it's insane. Now, is the Internet awesome? Yes. But should you regulate it? Yes. Absolutely. You should be able to pay. You should be able to write a book and keep it. You know, if you buy a book, you buy a book. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, you can't just download it off a PDF file and just... Steal there it. There you go. Right. I, I spent three years of my life working on this thing, and now you can have it forever. <laughs> and people think, you know, people think it's, like, funny that musicians are like, oh, yeah, we steal the music. I stole all that. I downloaded your song. You know, like, <laughs> I, I get that all the time. I'm like, like, hey, Rich, can I get your picture? I, I didn't buy nothing, but I've downloaded three of your records, and I'm like, well, give me 25 bucks for the picture. Right. You know, like... Let's like make a trade. And then, then all of a sudden, you're ungrateful... Because you're the artist who's trying to make a dollar and, you know, all the other artists before, like, you know, weren't sellouts and blah, 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 blah. But they're not, you know, they're not saying that anymore. If you get a, if you get a Toyota commercial, you're top of the mountain. Like, oh my God, I sold a car. <laughs> you know, now, you know, I remember when I got, I got scathing uh, scowls from, from my friends that uh, we sold Hummer 3s. The H threes or whatever they were, yeah. H twos, yeah. And our song was used for like three, like two or three years. That used to be such a big deal, especially in this genre. People would get so angry they would get if you sold out. Like you're this puritanical, like, hey, people don't buy records, dude. Right, and the people that were getting mad are the people you don't see anymore. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, now uh, uh, the young bands are like have at it and they get it but i remember back in the day like i turned down jc pennies i turned down because i thought my fans would think i was selling yeah, out right and then finally when it came to the car commercial i was like well someone's gonna someone's gonna someone's gonna get this money and i might as well take it and <laughs> you know what i mean like i'll take it but it was right when the <laughs> internet started going crazy it was right at 2000 like 2002 mm -hmm. 2003 and i was like well this the the, the free ride's over you know, the, 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 our, our nightmare is just beginning. Talk you know, to me a little bit about pledge music. Pledge music is actually probably one of the most exciting things that I've ever seen in the music business. Here's the deal. You're, you're hooked up to pledge music. 
they have an app for anybody that you can use. And I take videos of making the record. From that, an exclusive bunch of people get to see what we're doing. And I show two-minute clips of songs that we're working on or drums or when we're recording or when I'm singing. Mm -hmm. And I do that, and we've acquired all of these fans coming in and being a part of this pre-sale. And the reason why I like it is because it's not it's not Kickstarter. Right. Like, please, mm -hmm. please help me make the record. I want your money. Please. It's not begging. It's it's like if you want the record, here you get an extra song and you pre order it and you help us make it because it's expensive to make records. Absolutely. They get it. Did anybody give you any input that you took? No. While I you were making full the record? I wanted to make full on crazy videos that I made okay. that were just like ridiculous. I didn't know if anybody like hit you up and they were like, Hey, I have a great idea, you know, after watching a two minute clip of you singing something in the studio that kind Oh of no, no, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I would the lawsuits would be unbelievable. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't think about that. No, I I don't listen to any input like that. <laughs> no, no, nothing. We, I just go, this is something heavy we're working on and forget it. That's cool. You know, this is something cool. Check this out. And people can comment and, yeah. and they're really a part of the process. Yeah, they are literally, really cool. they would get weekly updates, like two minute long. You know, I would make movies. Mm -hmm. I would make like, I was like, well, we're waiting for this. I was, I was like, well, I'm waiting for the record to be mixed and I'm not doing anything today. So I made the opening scene to Apocalypse Now, but in my bedroom. <laughs> Like with my my ceiling fan, and then like my like I take the camera and I I open up the blinds and go, you know, Southern California. Shoot, I'm still in Southern California. You know, just and play like Doors music in the background. Yeah, like I just got creative and had fun with it, and just anything, like you know, like anything that was going on. Like hey, here's something weird. You know, just that's cool. And then at the end, they get they're getting they get more than most everybody else. Of, most of them want signed CDs, right? Or signed vinyl, or a signed poster from like some some of our older stuff, like the Amalgamate. I found a you know I found a bunch of Amalgamate posters and signed them. And that's cool. Here, take them. You know, take a, it's it's like rare stuff that I have lying around the house. Yeah. Like I got I sold a jacket that I was never going to wear again. It has an American flag on it, and it was you know I was just like this is I wore this on this record cover and people buy it. You know, it's yeah fans getting really something totally special. I mean the the jacket that I that I sold them was actually I took an American flag mm -hmm. and I took safety pins and I safety pinned all the way around this thing with like three four hundred safety pins this American flag it was right after 9-11 and I made this like American and like you know I each pin I you know there might be some blood on there from when I poked <laughs> myself and so you know the fans get that and they love it you That's know really cool. or like you know uh, you know guitars or just all kinds You're of having stuff. A a yard sale. I, I'm like, you hey, know? look at this stuff right. I got in my garage. Anybody want, want my stove? Giving up microwaves and stuff? Yeah, they like it. So the album Crazy Eyes out April 8th. Um, and your tour kicks off Make America Hate Again um, April 13th in San Francisco. The Make America Hate Again tour. Yes. I mean, that inspires me to just be excited. <laughs> yeah. Well, really? Really? Well, so much of the theme around industrial music was hate and anger and yeah. stuff like that. So I thought it was kind of funny. It's Don awesome. Donald Trump is not unifying. He's 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 only making people hate. Do you do you make tour posters? Yeah. Have you made that one? I haven't made the Donald Trump one yet. Okay. We we do have a shirt that has a filter over his mouth, like like as if we're the filter over I love his it. mouth. Um, but I haven't. I, we haven't gone into production with those. I'm, I, if we get sued, oh my god, that'd be so awesome. It would be so awesome. Oh my god, please sue me, Donald Trump. <laughs> They're both like, oh god. Because <laughs> you know, all I have to do is just go. Wow, look at this. You're not gonna believe Mr. This. Thin Skinned can't take a little joke. Oh my god, that'd be great. Well, once you become public domain. Once you become like the president, like President Obama, they make plates after him. They yeah. Make, once you're a president, all of a sudden you're the property of all of us. The all of us. So you know, I'm kind of 
I'm, I'm kind of saying something nice. <laughs> You're welcome. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> hey, here's a here's my here's the first protest T-shirt that you're that you have in your name. God, that's cool. That's going to be legal if you're president, right? Yeah. Good luck with this record. Thank it's, you. It's I appreciate so it. It's a it's a good record, and I'm really proud of it. Richard Patrick, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Of course. Nikki Six and Jen on the Six Sense.